Hey guys, this is Ricardo with Watch With Us. I'm here with Brad, the budding watch enthusiast. What's up? And we're here with our first, I wouldn't say first podcast, but the first podcast we're going to do under our new podcast name, which is, drum roll please, Bearded Time. Now, for those of you who are actually watching us on YouTube, you can clearly see why we chose the name Bearded Time. But for those of you who are listening to us over the podcast, please notice that uh, me and Brad have some heavy, heavy facial hair um, that's being grown out. So we just came together and we decided that would be a great name for the podcast. The fun name for the podcast, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so want to start off first. Well, first on a couple of things. Um, one being, of course, we need to get in our wrist shots ah yes very good <laughs> so what are you wearing brad so i have on uh my manta sky quest today it was a it was a blue shirt day dress up day so we're rocking with the sky quest you have on uh the object of my envy at the moment <laughs> right now uh I, so you know what I'll, I'll give it a quick little background so people understand, understand what's going on so a few weeks back I was um, working on the Watch With Us uh, Instagram, and I was just going through a bunch of different pages and, you know, liking a, a, a couple posts and commenting, and I came across this watch that I'm currently wearing, and I was like, oh, my God, I need that watch in my life. I let two or three days pass, and I still had the same thought in my mind. <laughs> oh, my God, I need that watch in my life. Um, now, the watch is called is actually created by a company called ECA, EC Anderson. Um, watch itself is called the Arctic Calypso. Um, it's a company out of Sweden, and it, it's a cool sports watch. And, I mean, like it happens with us on so many occasions, you see a watch, you want to watch it, and you realize that watch came out a while ago and there are no more uh, watches left, especially if you're looking for a micro brand watch, which they do limited runs. So chances and are if it's when you say limited, you mean like, like, correct me if I'm wrong. Like I researched this briefly. It's like mm -hmm. under a hundred pieces limited, yeah. right? Every, every model that they've done, um, they basically do like a hundred, a hundred run on the model. So, I mean, a lot of the micro brands we deal with, they do two, three, four hundred runs of certain models. Of course, that takes into account different colorways. Mm -hmm. um, but for this brand, uh, for ECA, this specific watch, which I'm going to show to you guys now, it's called, once again, the ECA Arctic um, Calypso. They did a hundred. And I wanted the watch bad. I did a crazy amount of research. I mean, I went everywhere. Watch you seek eBay. Nowhere could I find this watch. So when I first found the watch, I created a quick post on, um, on the stories for Watch With Us, basically saying this happens so often. You find a watch, you love a watch. Mm -hmm. The watch is no longer in production. Lo and behold, the company <laughs> sees that I post this. And they shoot me a message. Oh, you know, uh, we might have one in the back that we may have to piece together, but would you be interested? I jump <laughs> in. And I tell them, yes, I'd be interested. And it's crazy how quickly this happened because it went from that literally, they sent me that message maybe on a Friday. Mm. Um, that Friday, Saturday, I replied back to them. Um, Saturday, they also saw my reply. And they were just like, okay, so we're going to go ahead. We'll send you a link so you can purchase it. Sent me the link. I purchased it that Sunday. Mm -hmm. That Monday, they already sent me an email saying, hey, got all the pieces together. You put it together. Now you have to you know, put it on a timographer and make sure that everything's good. Everything's great. Um, we're going to be doing that on Tuesday. Hopefully, we send it out to you on Tuesday. Another part to this is that Friday is wind up and I really wanted to have this watch for wind up. <laughs> really, really, really wanted to have this watch for wind up. So as they're emailing me this, I'm like, okay, cool. That's great. Um, yeah, I really want to have this watch for a wind up. 
they don't even respond to that. Mm -hmm. Next message I get is, it's out. <laughs> yep. Now, Tuesday, I get the watch Wednesday. So all of this happened. So wait, th and, and it came it came directly from Switzerland also? Like it, it got two days directly into the country? from Sweden. Okay. Directly or from Sweden. Sweden. Okay. Yeah, directly from Sweden, straight to me, and literally overnight. Literally overnight. So I, they sent it out Tuesday in Sweden, which is a little bit early Tuesday here. Mm -hmm. And I got the watch on Wednesday. And I sized it and basically that Friday I had it on me. Um, <laughs> even funnier thing, I have this thing on me at wind up and John automatically thinks, Oh, you got to watch in to, to review. To review. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I'm like, no, <laughs> I no, bought I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the watch. He proceeds to put it on and he's like, I want one too. And I'm just like, I don't know what I, I, I we're going to have to talk to them. I don't know if they have another one in the box. Well, and, and so, so the problem is, so you post this, you post it on Instagram. I see it. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, I'm just like, holy crap, that's sexy. Like, that's an amazing looking watch. Mm -hmm. So I, of course, do research because what, what else are you going to do when you see something that looks amazing? I see they're sold out as well. Now, here's the thing. Like you said, couldn't find one on, on watch. You see, couldn't find one on eBay. I went to Reddit. I searched for previous Reddit posts. No one's even sold one ever on Reddit. Like, like, it's, like it's never happened before. Because um, they have the black dial variant. That has yes. like that, the printing, like it has their logo kind of like printed on the dial. Mm -hmm. um, and that looks amazing. And so I was like, oh my God, if I can, you know, let me see if I can find it. Use one of these somewhere. Let me see if I can. No, there, it's, it's not anywhere. And then, like I said, mm -hmm. I, I had my heart broken when I saw that it was like, oh, it's like, oh, we do like less than 100 pieces. I'm like, well, that, I mean, good luck with this. <laughs> you bought this. You're probably hanging on to it, most likely. And, and I mean, that I, one, I love the fact that it was a limited run. And actually, when I did the search on Watch UC, I found posts where people were asking, I want to buy this. Mm -hmm. If you happen to be wanting to sell it, please, please, I'm interested. <laughs> I want to buy it. And it was weird. And it, in my mind, I'm just like, shoot. I'm like, nobody thought to just, you know, ask the guys directly. Because it, it's weird. You, they, they, of course, they do a run of 100. The last time I checked officially, when I did my research, they said they had about four left. And mm -hmm. then this was uh, like months ago. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, four left, somebody picked them up. Um, but they had one left and I picked it up and it's... Well, it's, it's probably not even they had one left. They probably have like replacement parts um, that they, you know, they have like an extra, you know, a couple extra dials set aside for, you know, replacement purposes, a couple extra cases set aside for replacement purposes, crystals. And so basically you probably, they probably like kind of Frankenstein one together just from replacement parts they had in stock just to create one for you, which I mean, hell, you know, however you get it, <laughs> you know, just more, yeah. more power to you. I did yeah. the same, the same thing happened with me. So when I, um, when I bought the EMG Nemo from them, I really wanted the yellow one, but it sold out on their website. So like, I, I just, I messaged uh, Eric on Instagram and I'm just like, did, did would you have one that maybe like fell off a shelf somewhere that's like hiding behind something? He's like, I ah, will see what we can do. And then the same thing, like, he, you know, he invoiced me, sent me an invoice for the yellow one. And, and, and that's the one that I got. So yeah, it, it, it's, it rarely happens, but when it does, it's, oh man, it's a great yeah. feeling. Feels Cause, amazing. Cause you, especially for us, there's so many watches that get released throughout the year. And we always tend to find out about a watch months down the line. And by then, you're just like, okay, you know, I, maybe I, it wasn't meant to be, but I just got lucky on this one. Yeah, um, and, and, but, and the same thing with me, too. So I, I will say uh, to E.C. Anderson, who, by the way, uh, uh, liked my post that I made when I regrammed the photo that you did, uh, mm -hmm. if you happen to have one of the black dial variants of the Clipco <laughs> Sports sitting around, uh, let me know at budding watch enthusiast on Instagram. And, uh, you might convince me to part with, uh, with my hard earned money. We'll talk about that later in the podcast because that's <laughs> yes. the topic that we have for this week. So, yeah, it, it's, oh man. Uh, but, uh, you know what, let's get started on, on the, the, the main topics. I know you, we wanted to go over, uh, first thing, um, I think, definitely have to talk about is the are the new alpinist yeah I, and it's funny so i i had seen these they so where we got this from um say japan basically posted an announcement that shows the black version 
uh, the white, which is not white, which is actually like cream style, yeah, version. And apparently the green one is coming back as well, which I think we knew. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, just for so everyone knows, it's basically SBDC 087 is the black one. Hmm. 089 is your cream and 091 is your green. And for those of you that have not seen the new Alpinist yet, um, it basically looks like the Seiko Alpinist with one very distinct difference. Uh, and that is the fact that there is now a Prospects logo on the watch above the automatic branding at six o'clock. Do I, 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 the site, it, it never used to have a Cyclops though. It or did. maybe I'm, I think I could swear it never. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google the Sarb 17 while we're uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. while we're I, talking I, about this. I you might don't be right. rem- Oh, you I are right. Rem- it did not have a Cyclops before. You are correct. So, so Cyclops. So those those are your two main things. Um, the new Prospects logo, which they basically are stamping that thing on anything, any and all things within the Prospect. Um, prospect with, within, within their sports line, basically. Like if it like mm-hmm. if it's a sports watch at this point, it's getting a Prospects logo. It's getting a Prospects pretty much. much. Even though I think a lot of us love the just automatic um, that they used to just write in script. Well, and that's that's what I was surprised about. So I thought, so I'd heard before I saw it that it was going to have the, the the prospects logo on it, and I thought I was going to hate that. Like I thought it was going to look completely out of place. It was going to look completely stupid on mm-hmm. this watch. That and, and to be clear, like like the green Alpinus looks exactly like the Sarb Seventeen, except for the Cyclops and and this logo. Uh, the cream one looks like the white Alpinus that came before it. And the black mm-hmm. one looks pretty much like the the last time they did a black dial app, and it pretty much looks exactly the same mm-hmm. with, the, with the triangle markers instead of having the odd numerals on there as well. Um, so I thought the logo would look out of place, and I was ready to hate it and come on here and rant about it. And then when I actually saw it, I'm like, that's actually not that offensive. Like I'm, I'm not I'm not actually put off by that by that. Yeah, thing there. It, it, it's 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 weird. I, I thought I would have more of a strong reaction. But, I mean, we had heard about these coming out for a little while now. Mm-hmm. And then when it kind of hit officially and we saw what the official renderings were, I kind of just was like, mm-hmm. okay. I, like, it didn't stir any crazy emotion in me. It, 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 uh, I've been on so many forums already where people have talked about how much more expensive it is than compared to the earlier version. Mm-hmm. I've been on so many forums where people have talked about the upgrade to the 6R35, the extra 20 hours of power reserve. I've, I've heard it so many times that now that I'm seeing, I'm just, I'm just like, yeah. My, my only thing is I hope the leather strap is better, which it's, it is. I, I, I will guarantee you a hundred percent. It is the same exact same. strap that yep. they had on there before. No and I, I, I hope the bracelet, uh, the bracelet is nice on this. And those are only two things. I'm probably not going to buy it. Oh no! I'm um, definitely not buying one like that. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> there's no way that's happening. It's so it's it, it it it's just one of those. Uh, okay, I know, you know it, all the hoopla, all the talk, and you just like. I uh, most of the people I know who have the old Alpinist are just like, no, not upgrading. I mean, like I I love my current Alpinist the way it is. I'm good, and, and most of the other people might be interested in the black, but for the most part, a lot of people like going back in time to the older. Mm-hmm. Um, black version um, that they used to have, which is really hard to find, but it's it's a great looking watch. So it's just one of those uh, type of releases. I, I don't know. Maybe you feel differently, but I th- I think the I th- I'm actually I really do like the black one. Like if I was going to buy one, that's probably the one it would be. And I think mm-hmm. that's probably going to be the one that is the most successful, just because a it's on a bracelet, and b it's a variant that has been highly sought after because like you said the the older black ones are especially rare and usually go for quite a premium um Mm -hmm. so being able to get it at a reasonable price point i mean it's going to be you know seven hundred dollars us retail which really means that you can probably pick one up for a couple hundred bucks cheaper depending if you buy it from like amazon or something like that Mm -hmm. um so it's going to be like like i think that's going to do pretty well you'll see the white doll one do well again for the same reasons, just because the old versions of that are tough to find and people have been striving after that variant, but it's just the Alpinus. Like it's, it's, it's not, um, it, it, I, I think that, and I don't even think Seiko's releasing it with a lot of fanfare. I think the fanfare is coming more from the community itself yeah. than anything else. Um, and it's, it's fine. Like, like it, it, you either like this watch at this point or you don't as enthusiasts, we're probably all very familiar with it. 
Um, I mean, if I was going to get one, it would have been getting the the Hodinkee one, you know, when the that came out back in February. So yeah, and I think that's a lot of people feel the same way. It's mm-hmm. it's just it's going to be interesting to see how this watch does. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where the prices are months down the line. Mm-hmm. Like it, I really want to see because they're talking about a January release. You have Basel in March. Mm-hmm. Like, will these things still be holding around 700 by the time we get to Basel? Or will they kind of get down to, like, five in the 500 range? Um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be interesting to – that's one thing I really want to see. It's going to be interesting to see that. Yep. It's going to depend on availability. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing it's going to boil down to. If, if, if the supply is – like, if they're readily available for people, then, yeah, you'll see prices go down yeah. for sure. Okay. Well, that was – pretty easy uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh now to the guts of today's podcast definitely wind up uh, some of the watches i think both me and brad kind of uh have been fanning over uh since um we're about uh, about a week and a half removed from wind up and you know had enough time to breathe and relax and 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 see if our lust is is actually true love um I mean, I think b- before we started the podcast, you basically said there were three that you really liked, mm-hmm. um, I, and I actually have three that I really like. So you know what? Let's let's go ahead. You started off. Okay. What was your 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 number one love affair? Well, let me so up? let me let me preface this by saying that any watch um, there were a lot of watches that I liked that were at the show that I also saw at District Time a couple mm-hmm. of weeks beforehand. Um, mm-hmm. I did a video on my channel, uh, the budding watch enthusiast, about those five watches from District Time, but there's mm-hmm. no overlap there. So if, they, so if I saw it at District Time, I didn't put it on this list. These are ones that were only at Wind Up um, exclusively. So the first one, we're gonna say we're gonna save our overlap one till the end, um, mm-hmm. because there's one watch that we both really adored, and I knew what it was gonna be as soon as I put it on my list. Um, mm-hmm. The first one for me though was the the Brew Mastergraph uh, that John from Brew released at the at the show this year so i really like the retrograph which was the very small um like rectangular chronograph that he came out with last year he had half a thought to buying one but it, 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 it i was so afraid it was going to be too small uh for my for my eight inch wrist to to pull off uh but then he released a new chronograph this year called the master graph which is mm-hmm. it's it's the same size um very similar size but it, it feels bigger because it has this really cool bezel on the outside of the earth sitting on top of the case as well. Uh, still the same Mecha Quartz chronograph layout from him. Just, John's watches, Bruce watches are just really, really awesome. Uh, very yeah. uniquely styled. Like there, there's nothing out there, micro brand or uh, big brand that is quite like uh, what his watches look like. And this thing looks badass. I, I like this even more than I like the retrograph. Yeah, got a chance to talk with him. Um, we had like a quick interview. It was it was crazy over there, um, and this was on a Friday, which Fridays tend to be nice. Well, I'll take it back. Fridays tend to be not as crazy as Saturdays, but this was the craziest I've ever seen it on a Friday. Hmm. Got a chance to talk with him. Um, got to see the Master Graph. Great watch. Um, love his designs. He's one of those guys. One of those brands. That I I almost want to to grab a whole bunch of seven seven fifties, a whole bunch of P three one thirty threes from Russia, put them in his hands and just be like go crazy, because um, I'd love to see him come out with a, an automatic, just an automatic chronograph, and I I'd love to see what he would do with that, between the design, the size, I, like I looked at the master graph and I was just like. This is a cool design. Um, the surfaces, the, that the the steely dial, everything about the watch is just it's just it breathes cool. Mm-hmm. Um, really like his design. So I, I completely see why you fanned over that watch. Uh, seeing it in person, I, I it's a really nice watch. Did you get to see the copper one in person? No, no, okay. no. That's, the, that's, the, that's where the money's at. And, and again, for him, <laughs> it makes sense. Like all all of his watches have this. Uh, have a very subtle like allusion to coffee just because mm-hmm. brew obviously like that it's in the name and like I said I love the copper one for that reason because the dial is like coffee colored almost mm-hmm. still have the black uh, the black bezel silver case really cool contrast 
Um, yeah, his watches are are phenomenal uh, pieces of design for sure. And and I love the Mecha Quartz too. I love the Mecha Quartz movement. No fuss, you know, no 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 mess or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I you know set it, forget it, that kind of thing. The only thing I don't like about the the 68 that he's using is is it does have the running seconds for the time telling, which I can I can do without. I don't without yeah seconds ticking away. Um, but yeah, just really cool watches and every everything he comes out with, I'm always very interested in because again, from a design standpoint, uh, he is certainly a, a unique space within independent brands. Definitely, definitely. Okay, we're gonna follow up on the chronograph front. I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, my first love, um, and I'd seen it a couple of days before, but this, I actually got to see it in person, um, has to be the Laurier Gemini. Definitely the Laurier Gemini. Um, for those not familiar, um, Laurier is a Michael brand that came out, I'd say it's been, what, about two years since they came out with the Neptune? I, th- I feel like it's been less time, because I, I, I seem to remember them only really being around for a year, at least available for a year. Available. So, so probably no earlier than early 2018 Mm -hmm. um and they they had a great design people loved the design their bracelets and this was their first opportunity to to make a chronograph um they settled on the st19 um the seagull movement and which which a a lot of people i think in the community definitely say hit or miss Mm -hmm. um the the thing about the st19 is uh, a big thing about getting a good quality version is where you're picking it up from. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many different distributors of the movement that you have to be careful and make sure. And also, you know, once you do get the, um, the movement, you have to put in some work to make sure that it's, it's quality well, before you get it out into the hands of your consumers. But they decided on that movement and boy, did they do a good job. Um, one, they decided on the movement and they decided to, to, put a closed case back, which, which already made me very happy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yes, the ST19, it looks good, but I think I don't really need to see the movement. Uh, that's, well, that's, and, because, and because they did that, like I'm, I'm looking at the dimensions, it's only 10 millimeters thick. Like that's, that's, that's why great. I, it's amazing. That's why I, it's, <laughs> great. it's a, it's a hand, hand wound chronograph movement. Um, so of course now they were able to keep the dimensions low. And I think it comes in 38, 39. Um, I think it's 39. Correct me uh, if I'm wrong. It is 39. Yeah, 39. 30, 39 by 47. And the Dow variant that they did on this thing is just amazing. Uh, two register chronograph. Uh, you have your white version. You have a black version. And I'm trying to remember what's the... A, 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 a uh, one with a blue. And they had it on a bracelet, they had it on a bun, and they had it on a regular strap. And it looked good on everything. The sizing was perfect. The thickness was perfect. I mean, on the bun, it stole my heart. Um, it's, they, just, they just get it. Like it, it. That release was just perfect. Everybody who I, who I think ended up um, coming to the table, I had two or three people next to me while I was looking at the watch. They kept on asking me, is it available right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and people just want that watch because it's it's a great looking watch. It stays in line with their their designs, and the watch itself it, it wears perfectly on the wrist. I mean, yeah, I, I started fanning over that watch the second I, I walked in. That's the first table I went to when I came into wind up. It's it, they did a great job. Well, and not only that, so it's it's definitely not a racing chronograph so there's no there's no tachymeter scale on it mm-hmm. but they do have a bezel on the watch and it is a 12 hour bi-directional bi-directional i have to i have to say it again uh, a 12 hour bezel which is yeah. Nice. um yeah. you like i said if you're gonna have that on there if you're not gonna do something fixed and at least make it something that is gonna be useful um, to track like multiple times. I'm a huge yeah. fan of the poor man's GMT. I GMT companies would do it. So, and, and it, it's weird. So many times I see these type of chronographs, and they put like a, a countdown bezel mm-hmm. or a timing bezel. And I, I, in my mind, I'm just like, why would I need that on the chronograph? Right. I have a chronograph. I, I don't. I have a chronograph. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Why would I need that on a chronograph? I have a chronograph. So, what else could you provide me that I would truly 
would, would be truly helpful. And straight off the bat, that, it was a great decision on their part. We'll give you the poor man's GMT, which is great. I mean, all, that's perfect for me. Switzerland is only about six hours away. I, I, I basically turn the thing upside down and I'm, 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 I'm perfect. <laughs> I'm perfect. <laughs> so uh, it was a great choice on their part. And I, I think the watch is going to sell really well. Um, I, I'm trying to remember what the MSRP is going to be when it's uh, released. Four ninety nine is what they have on their website right now. I mean, that come on, like yeah, for the yeah. size of that watch. Um, yes, I know some people might be a little weary about the ST nineteen, but I think with their customer service, yeah, I mean, you could put those thoughts behind you. Uh, I think it's a great move on their on their part. I think it's a great watch. I think I think the the seagull movement is the only the only sticking point. It's an excellent mm. watch, not for me personally. Um, mm. I'm more of a I'm more of a racing chronograph guy. Like that's what mm. tickles my fancy much more. But if you are looking for, um, like a you know like a dressier chronograph, then this mm. is definitely going to be in that wheelhouse. I mean, it basically looks like they just they took a Neptune and just kind of kind of reworked it to make it a chronograph. So if you like yeah. the design of the Neptune, you're probably going to like the design. You like this, yeah. Okay, so that's our, those are our first two out of the way. What's next for you? So the other one, or the, the next one, I should say, for me, uh, is actually not from a micro, uh, micro brand. It's actually from one of the big brands that was at the show, and that's Oris. Uh, and this is the, uh, the Art Blakely uh, limited edition mm. uh, Oris watch. So those of you might not, uh, most, I don't think anyone would know this, because I don't think I've talked about this on the podcast. Um, I actually went to college originally as a, for music education, and I, nice. I was a musician coming up, you know, growing up into age. So I, and the other thing that I also love is if you're going to do a, a themed watch, or if you're going to do like a special edition watch, I really want you to lean into it. And having this, you know, very simplistic, very, you know, very bare bones, you know, very minimalist kind of dress watch, but still very much leaning into the theme. Art, Art Blakely is a, a, drummer. a drummer. And so the watch dial has uh, inside of the minute track, there is a circle that goes around that also has the claws brackets on it that looks like a snare drum. And then if you flip it over, uh, it looks like a, the, the case back looks like a crash symbol, basically. Yep. And this, it, it's it's so cool. Like it's one of the coolest watches I've seen. No, it it it's they. I think this is. I don't know what number in your jazz collection this is, but they have a history of doing these kind of jazz oriented um, watch releases, um, picking a specific um, individual history of jazz, and they kind of come up with a watch. And I, I love this watch also. Um, it 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 just dives in to the theme. It, 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 it's not just a basic they could have just said you know we're just going to make a basic nice dress watch and you know what that has to do with jazz and that's cool mm -hmm. no they go ahead you, like you said on the dial you have um, I think what they were going for was the claws on a bass drum okay so, so it, seems, you, it looks like a snare drum to me so yeah if you see I, I have no history in music so you may <laughs> actually be 100% well, correct to be fair <laughs> Ricardo all drums kind of look the same because they all use the same mechanism so <laughs> <laughs> all, all, I'm, all, all I know is that it's the big drum that the drummer usually presses and it goes doom, doom, doom. Oh, that's, that's, that right would, in front that of would be a bass drum for sure. That so. would be a bass drum. So there's little, there's six claws around the front of that drum. I guess they use the claws to stretch out the material and get the mm -hmm. specific sound that they want. Um, and that's kind of what they're doing with the dial. And you have the cymbal on the back. And it's classic three-hander, no date, but it's a beautiful-looking dress watch. Mm -hmm. Beautiful-looking dress watch. Okay, I, yeah, that that definitely see why you you like that watch. It's a great-looking watch. Yeah, and like and like I said, I, I I was a jazz musician, like super heavily in the jazz. So this is this is amazing to me. Even though I wasn't a drummer, this is still an amazing looking watch my eyes this the symbol on the back is really though but that, that, that's the thing like i was like i'll oh, drum on the front is cool then you flip it over like oh my god this case back yeah is incredible. definitely okay. okay so for my number two uh i'm trying to remember i, I think we both agreed on this on the on the cws mm -hmm. okay so yeah. my next is actually from a brand called ferrer 
Oh no, no, uh, this this is the one we agreed on. The CW, that's that's yours. I said we can just nerd out about C- about Christopher Ward. Okay, yeah. So we'll <laughs> nerd out about that at the end. So for me, the the next one for me is the Ferrer. I call it the Ferrer Rocher, um, <laughs> because the name of the brand is Ferrer. The watch is called the Rocher. But I keep on thinking about the hazelnut and the chocolate and the Ferrero Rochers. So I call it the Ferrero Rocher. Um, it is their world timer um, that the brand just released. Beautiful, beautiful um, watch. Um, if, if you guys are familiar with Ferrero, they really play with color on their dials. Um, these are not your basic watches in terms of design. These, full, these are full of color. They really pop but it just works well. And they just released a set of world timers. Um, the watches have an inner, they have outer rotating this with the different cities and an inner rotating this with the different hours. And you would set your city first and then the, you would set your hours so that it matches up with the cities and now you have your world timer. At any point in time, you can look at the watch and realize what time it is anywhere in the 24 time zones around the world. And it's a beautiful looking watch. Just, I think they hit this out of the park. Um, I got a chance to talk with, with Paul from their company. I'm um, a great guy and, and got to see the watches and they did a great job with this watch. Um, I'm a sucker for a world timer. Um, another benefit of this is most world timers that you'll find out there might run you anywhere from two to three grand um, from certain brands. Uh, uh, C Ward has one that will be that comes in under uh, 1k, um, but for your, for the most part, a lot of the world timers you're gonna see are gonna put you in that over two range. And this comes in at around fifteen hundred dollars, and it's beautiful, it's unique, it's a great looking world timer. I love this watch. Yeah, and this and this was number three uh, on my list as well. Uh, Everything you said, like the thing with Fair is that, like you said, colors, like the, the colors on their watches are often very unique, very bold, a lot of colors you don't see every day. You know, they, you know, they have a you know, famous chocolate dial chronograph. A friend of mine has a, that very deep teal uh, GMT from them. I don't think anyone realized that they had a world timer in the works and world times, you know, they have a very specific style that they, that they all kind of encompass mm-hmm. usually. And very, C-Ward, very, a little, very, yeah, very, a little, a little, a little <laughs> booty, a little booty, <laughs> just a little, just a little. Every, every, I mean, the one, the one that most folks go to is, is like the paddock world timer, right? Like that's probably yeah. the most, the, the one you think of most enthusiasts think of, <laughs> think of world timer. right? But this one, um, I don't know, it just, it just, it looks so modern. Um, I love the fact that they, that they, they have the, you know, the day night split on the inner dial that has the 24 hour time zones on it, but it's not just done in black and white or red and blue. Like, like they, like they have, they're using the bold colors like fair likes to use Um, the, the sunburst effect on the dial is crazy. And they kind of sort of have like a, almost like a sector dial thing going on with the way, with the way that it's laid out too, Mm -hmm. because they have each hour section kind of, divided you know kind of separated from all the others um which is really neat as well uh i like the fact that they went two-tone with the text on the city bezel as well again they didn't need to do that that's just a cool little effect that they have in there this is just a really cool looking watch fair has not really been a company even though they do lots of fun you know lots of fun designs and stuff like that not been a company that has ever really caught my eye. And I'm talking about the Aldrich one specifically. I know you said the Roche uh, was your choice. That's kind of the black dialed one with the white uh, bezel. The Aldrich is the blue, uh, like the super blue. The super, <laughs> super blue. blue. Super right. blue. <laughs> the super blue. Uh, G- Shocker. I like a blue GMT. Who'd have thought? Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what blue. are you wearing again? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, well, you know. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, just, just they, they never really caught my eye before, but. As soon as I saw this on Instagram, like I just, I just started salivating, started salivating. Like it's, it's just an amazing looking watch. Um, and from what I've heard from folks that have used their watches, uh, quality is also top notch as well. And you mentioned that Chris Ward has a sub thousand dollar GMT and there's this cool one. I would expect this to be kind of in the same ballpark as far as quality goes, but I don't know for me, I'm spending the extra money and, and getting this one because it's just, it's an incredible 
looking watch just a really yeah. classic watch and it's modestly sized too like there's all this going on and it's only 39 millimeters but yet when i'm looking at it on the render at least it doesn't look like it, it's cramped and world timers are going to be busy just by you know by definition of what they are mm -hmm. but this does not look um this does not cramped. look yeah. right yeah it's not it's, it's a really good looking watch really good looking watch so you basically just said what you're 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 you're, you're um, you like the Aldrich, yeah, and now and now and now, see so yeah, it. The, the Aldrich would be my choice to give in. It's blue, like mm -hmm. I said. Not not that I need another blue watch, but what the hell? Um, yeah. That's certainly on there as well. But now we can nerd out about Christopher Ward for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's the thing about Christopher Ward. Um, I think for for a long time, people have kind of considered them to be a gateway drug when it comes to. To, to buying watches. Um, the bad thing about that is a lot of times if you're a great rare drug, you eventually graduate to something else mm -hmm. and you leave your great rare drug behind. It's getting harder and harder to do that with Crystal Reward. Um, they, I think they're kind of past just the gateway drug and now they're making watches that I think a lot of people want to keep in their collection. Um, it, 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 and they're kind of hitting it on so many different levels and it's kind of appealing to so many different people and it, it's working for them. And I really saw it when I went to wind up, it was Friday and I'd have to say, I felt like almost a third of whatever they had out had already sold. Yeah. And I'm, not, not, is, and I'm not surprised. Cause then, didn't, didn't they also bring limited editions with them? To yes. The show? Yeah. They, they, they had that beautiful moon watch that they created. They, they had some great watches on display and they, I know a lot of people in jest say, oh, you know what, you know, they're, 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 they're the brand that you kind of start off with. But I think we're past that point now. I, 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 they are a serious watchmaking company that makes serious watches that I think a lot of people enjoy. From their GMTs to um, the military series that they just created, which... I'm, I'm, I might have to whisper, I like better than the Braemont military series that they released. <laughs> um, nobody say anything. Um, it's, it's, they, and I got to see those in person and they're great watches. And for me, the watch I got to see was a watch that they would be releasing a few days after wind up. Um, and they, many of you probably saw it on their Instagram page. And for me, it was, it's the C60 Abyss. Mm -hmm. um, it's their all black, red, with red highlights, um, C60 diver that they created. Um, comes in under 1K. Beautiful watch. With the, it has the whole all black thing going on for it. Uh, I mean, I remember somebody on um, Instagram said something funny. Oh, you get, it's not even legible. I'm like, loom me, baby, loom me. Because <laughs> when the loom on that thing goes on, uh, I, I think it was something along the line that said, oh, if you're diving, you're not even, even going to see it. But the bezel is loomed. The indices are loomed. Who, the hands who, are leaned. Re regardless, who's diving? Like, like can, can, we, can we please get away from, from using that as the, as, the, as the determiner of whether a dive watch – like, who, who is actually diving with a dive watch in 2019? Come on. Yeah. The most we're doing is splashing that sucker a little bit when we go into the shower uh, right. or, 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 or diving into a four-feet-deep um, swimming pool. Uh, most of us are not the, going 1,000 meters deep uh, with a watch. And, and if we are going a thousand meter deep, it, it's it, we're gonna have a lot better uh, equipment and digital equipment with us instead right. of these. These you know are just. I, you know what I really like about this watch? I like the fact that even though they went with a blacked out design, that they didn't decide to do like a PVD coated watch or a DLC coated watch. Like they just went with like gunmetal, yep. and they're like, "This is this is what it's gonna be." Gonna be this looks badass. No, it's a badass watch. Our prices is, is reasonable. Um, you can you it, can get this watch for seven hundred twenty five dollars right now because they have their they have their fall coupon that you yeah. can use. Brand I mean, new. like for a blacked out watch, and it's it's color matched uh, date will as well. <laughs> of course, of course, that's the thing. That, that's the thing that, uh, 
probably, so, the, uh, probably the first thing you looked at when you uh, oh man you oh, watch okay. wouldn't it be funny if, if, if a grand makes an all black watch and then the, the date will is all white and you're just like really, like, you, really? You, you 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 say that like it's a joke but you know that Seiko would absolutely do that in a in oh, a, in a heartbeat. second in, in a, a heartbeat second. in a heartbeat um, but no, I, I love this watch. I, I think it's it's a great it's a great buy if you're looking for all blacked out watch um, that kind of has a cool thing, cool vibe going on with it. I mean, it comes on a black and red rubber strap that just really works with the whole design. Mm-hmm. I mean, I loved it. I saw it. I, I got to meet the man himself, Mr. Ward. Um, it, just the whole experience and, and their table at Wind Up was just great. And that was, it was a fight between this and the new um, GMT that they released. Mm -hmm. Um, But I leaned more towards this. Uh, But yeah, I I definitely love the C60 of this. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've been, I've been extolling the virtues of, uh, of Christopher Ward for quite some time now at this point. Um, I, I said it before and I will continue to say it until I'm proven wrong. Show me a watch brand um, that is a better value for money right now in the like non micro brand space than Chris Reward because I, I don't think one exists. Like if you look at their watches, if you look at the quality that it delivers, I mean like the military series that you're talking about, these are sub thousand dollar watches that have movements that are within cost tolerance. For less than a thousand bucks, like like okay, Formex, and that's it. Like those are the, that's the only that's the only other company and, that that even and, and, and they're consistent with this. Right. Their mantra is to create an affordable, good watch. Yes, we may argue a million times about the logo, where it's placed, all these things. Okay, that's cool. If once you get past the logo. These are honestly some of the best bang for buck watches that you could buy under a thousand dollars. I mean, these can be a nice part of your collection if you could like that military series. I I love that, and that military series has the Christopher Ward at twelve, mm-hmm. um, but it perfect perfectly themed, great case back designs, great overall designs. I mean, right now under a thousand dollars, which used to be the 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 Seiko's playground. I'm sorry. I mean, bef- right now under a thousand dollars. Before I look at buying a Seiko, with there are a ton of options under one K, I'm looking at Christopher Ward, and, and you could easily start to see. Look at what they provide. Look at what they provide, and you start to just say, you know what? I'm kind of leaning in this direction. So. And and it's, and and it's a shame. Like like the company that I think is the one that suffers the most um, from this. And I don't know. I doubt they've directly suffered. Like I'm sure they're still doing fine. But in in my eyes, the company that I think that I don't look at that much because of Chris Ford is Oris. Like it like they are basically putting out like similar quality watches, but Chris Ford costs half as much. Like that's what it yeah. will out to at the end of the day. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, amazing, and and like I said, and and the stealth's not even my jam. Like that's the other thing too. They're actually coming to the table now with just a obscene variety of different options. Like mm-hmm. they just they just remodeled the C60 line. That's their big sports watch line. If you want more of the the dressy sports watch, well, we got the C65 line for you then. No problem. And, yeah. now, we're, and now we're putting out variants and crazy amounts of options in that line as well just like you said they're 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 knocking it out of the park left and right here yeah and it's interesting you said that about oris because like they were it was almost like a a, a heavyweight fight you, know, you walk into wind up to your right oris <laughs> <laughs> to your left christopher ward and it, it it it's i mean oris will always have a special place in my heart i think they make amazing watches but you're right i think Christopher Ward is kind of that competitive, you know, that, that competitor that's kind of right there just saying, oh, yeah, look at what we have. Hmm. Hmm. Look what we can do. Hmm. 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 And it's, it's, I'm really starting to like what they're, what they're making. Um, I, I really hope they eventually get past the whole logo debacles and all that stuff. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's for them to get past. I think it's for everybody else to get past. That thing, that you know, logo right. never, right. ever bothered me, ever. No, you're right. Put it, you're put right. it at twelve. Put it at nine. 
I don't care. As long as the watch is well designed, I'm going to buy yeah. it. Yeah. And it, it's weird. It never, it, especially in some of these new watches, it never kind of screams at you in That's terms the of the like, It just it it, blends it. And, and on it, the GMTs, like I have, I'm sorry, I'm moving over here. I got, I got, the, I got the Pepsi GMT here. The logo yeah. actually assists in the symmetry of the watch. Yeah. Like it would, it would look off balance if it was, if it was at twelve. Yeah, nine date at three. You have wording at, at six, and you have that. Um, I'm, it, does it have that kind it, of? It, yes, it has. It has the stamp logo. At the 12. stamp logo at twelve. Yeah. I mean, uh, like they're they're making really good watches right now. I mean, you can't you can't say anything. It's hard to say anything bad about them right now. Um, I. Did we miss your last one? What's no, no, that one, it was the fair. It was the world timer. Was mine. the world timer? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to get into our last part of <laughs> of today's <laughs> today's podcast. So, so, so when 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 me and Ricardo were talking about what topics we want to talk about this week, I'm like, hey, I uh, I it's it's been really difficult to save for a grail. So I'm I'm trying my damnedest right now to save for a Grand Seiko. 9F quartz. That's what I want. And I'm like halfway there and, and we're slowly chipping away at it. And I'm hoping by the springtime that we'll have enough money in the bank and, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. And that'll be a very happy day. But there are watches that keep flying in from all angles, especially this time of year, especially if you're into micro brands. This is the worst time of year to have a, to have a watch fund. Uh, that has money in it that could easily be spent in a moment's notice. And then mm-hmm. Ricardo's coming along with his E.C. Anderson watch. Like, look at this hotness right here. This is amazing. You didn't even know this existed, but look at it. Don't you want it? And I'm like, I am trying really hard right now to hang on to this money so that I can get this 9F quartz in the spring. But all of you are making it incredibly difficult for me. <laughs> and I wanted to just talk about how really hard it is sometimes to save up for a grail watch. And, and to what Brad has said, I have now come up with a new hashtag. <laughs> my hashtag is now hashtag F the Grail. That is literally my hashtag. Because <laughs> I am tired. I, I'm, I'm, my Grail watch, similar to Brad, has always been a, a grand staple. For me, I really want um, a manual wound spring drive grand staple. Right now, that basically affords me just the 9R02 spring drive manual wound. Problem is, that movement only comes in watches that are over $50,000, and that's not happening. Um, I am, I'm not a baller. I'm not a shot caller. If I won the lottery, <laughs> even then, I'd pause before purchasing such a watch. But for me, my, my grill is a manual wound spring drive watch. Uh, and right now, my grill does not exist. Um, so, so it's easier for me to, to say hashtag F the grill because I don't have a, a target. Um, but even then, it, it's what's helping me it, it right now is because I don't have a grill, I'm really starting to look at all these different and amazing watches that are coming out. Um, add to that the fact that I, I, I have a better control over, over when and on what watches I spend my money on. So literally in a week, I could go over 10 watches that I start fanning over and I want really bad. And literally I'll, I'll look at 500 places where I could get that watch for the cheapest price and I can afford it. And I pause and, and I stop myself. And I don't stop myself because I have a grill on mine. I stop myself because I have to ask myself, Ricardo, when you buy this watch, how long will this watch stay in the collection? Mm-hmm. Are you buying this simply for the quick... Uh, and then <laughs> he just, just, it away. just to get just to get the endorphin rust. That's the only reason why. <laughs> Literally, are you just <laughs> buying it for that? Or are you honestly buying this watch so that you can keep it in your collection? For me, I and I, I, simply because it's the most recent watch I, I bought. Before I bought the ECA, it had been months before I, I bought another watch. The previous watch I bought was a Certina GMT. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a cool looking watch, but honestly, it, 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 it was a quick hit. I literally bought it and after a couple of months, I barely wore it and I was just like, no. Um, but with the ECA, I saw the watch, checked out the specs, checked out the color, 
and it, it was a tricky choice also because the ECA has an integrated bracelet, mm -hmm. which basically cuts it down on just how many um, how many options I have in terms of straps. So usually integrated bracelet for me usually means I'm not buying a watch. Right, because you, like, you like to change it up. I get it. You like to change okay. it up. So, so for, for, I mean, it's one of the main reasons I never bought a, uh, a Acris. Because uh, in my mind, I was just like, it's a dive watch. I need, I, I need to be able to change the straps. And yes, I know they have options, but it just wouldn't be enough for me. But what ended up kind of swaying me in my decision making was one, the thinness of this watch. Mm -hmm. This watch comes in at about 10 millimeters. So it's, it's really thin. Um, and then just the bracelet on the watch, it made me realize, okay, I, I, you know what? It, I could wear this on a bracelet forever. And I'll be, I'll be absolutely content with that. Mind you, they do come with a strap as well for the watch. I've, I, I got the strap as well with the watch. And, and I like, I put the strap on for a little while, but I went right back to the bracelet because I think the watch just looks better on the bracelet. Um, it's honestly one of the best designed bracelets I've ever had on a watch, ever. I mean, the, 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 the transition from polish to brush is basically a, a tapered H-link mm -hmm. bracelet. Um, and, and the main reason I knew that I made a good choice on this watch was after I got the watch, I was still finding things about the watch that, that made me love the watch even more. Uh, it, it was a few days after I bought the watch that I realized that they etch the brand's logo on the inner bezel of the watch, much in the same way that Rolex does. Like all um, the way around, or is it just like in one Like spot? all the way around. Um, so on the inner polished surface of the bezel, mm -hmm. like is the brand logo etched all the way around the watch. Um, it, I mean, the watch definitely gives you a, a little bit of the Milgauss um, vibes. And overall, I just fell in love with the watch. And even today, I, I mean, I hate to say, I, I haven't worn my Tudor in a while. <laughs> and that let me know immediately that I, you know what, this was the watch for me to buy. And had the scary thing is, had I had a grill on my mind, I might have not purchased this watch. And I would have hated myself mm -hmm. for not having experienced this watch. I'm never going to sell this watch. This is such a limited watch that I'm afraid if I sell this watch and later down the line, I want to get this watch back. I may never get this watch back. Right. And that's, and that's the tricky part is like, is like you said, it's, it's trying to weigh, do I actually want this watch or am I just doing it because I want a watch right now and I'm just tired of waiting. And so like, for me, like I'm in the same boat as you, like I, I usually marinate on a decision to purchase a watch. Um, the Nemo was actually, that was the last watch that I bought. And that was actually a dip into the grail fund as well and the reason that i ended up buying that watch is because when i had it in for review when i did the review for watch with us and then i sent it back to emg i couldn't stop thinking about that freaking watch like i kept thinking about it and looking at pictures that i took of it <laughs> constantly and i could not get it out of my mind and so when you go on like that for like three four weeks i think at that point you can make a safe decision that you're getting a watch that you know that you definitely want for sure and, and so that, that's been the challenging thing is between district time and between wind up and everything going on. And again, micro brands right now are just in a, a stupidly good spot in terms of the mm -hmm. industry. Like if you're a fan of micro brand watches, you, it has not never been a better time for you as a watch enthusiast because there's mm -hmm. so much good stuff happening out there in that space and so like notice is coming in with new watches and you know like we talked about the watches like fair has this world timer and brew's coming out with this new chronograph and there and then you're dropping this eca in my lap and all this stuff and like there's all this amazing stuff right now and it keeps forcing me to really confront do i want to deprive myself of these other excellent watches that i'm pretty sure that i that i actually want that i'm not just crushing on or do we do we you know slavishly you know keep our eyes on the prize and and keep focused on on that grand Seiko that we hope to have in you know four five six seven months however long it takes yeah. to save up the money for that it's really hard it's really hard <laughs> it's really um, hard. I, I always see it as this if you if you if you buy wisely it, it it's yes you may take a small hit like if you pull let's say seven hundred dollars out of your fund 
to buy a watch that would normally cost maybe $1,100. And you know that down the line, you could sell that watch again for $600. You basically enjoyed that watch for, uh, for basically $100. You rented that watch and enjoyed it for $100. The, the, the tricky thing about that is that's also something you kind of don't want to do. You want to know that you, you're, you're buying that watch and you're going to keep that watch. Right, because that's hundred. Because even though you enjoyed it for a hundred bucks for X months, that's still you you sunk a hundred dollars out of that that you're never going to yeah. see again. So yeah, and and I think I think you'll I think you'll be okay. I think what much like what I'm what I did was for me, as I said, there's not I don't have a a specific watch in mind when it comes to a grill. I know the movement that I want in it, but they just don't make that watch for me. And I know when they do eventually make that watch from stainless steel, it's probably going to cost anywhere from seven to eight thousand um, dollars because it's a manual wound spring drive movement. So I know that, but at the same time, it's that I've kind of pushed that off to the side. Um, this right here has kind of helped in terms of staying away from the grill because. I have a, 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 a new human being in my life that I have to take care of. And it's kind of, that's also kind of changed my thought process when it comes to watch. I have my cornerstone watch, which is my Tudor Black Bay Steel. That is, that is the watch I'm giving my son. That is the cornerstone of my collection. I have the watch that means a lot to me, which is the watch, I, my first Swiss watch that I purchased um, on my honeymoon. Uh, I have... I have, uh, you know, a few fun watches here and there. They, they more have sentimental values to me because they came from my from my wife. Uh, and then I have this, the CCA, which is not going anywhere. I, there's, mark my words, I'm saying this right now. Short of being in fi- a financial, you know, you know, tough spot, I'm never selling this ECA. Never. It, it's it's grown that much for me it started it, the watch is is, is the, the the meaning of the watch to me has grown so much and my love for the watch has grown so much i'm never getting rid of this watch so for me i've kind of pushed the whole growl off to the side mm-hmm. um and you i know you have the nine up but like i said if you're gonna if there are watches you're looking at just look at them honestly and just to ask yourself yeah. am i just you know Am I just buying this because I really want to enjoy this for a short period of time and I'm just going to sell this? Or am I buying this because you know what? I'm keeping this sucker and it's not going anywhere. Or we'll go with alternate plan C and that is only say that you would get watches that are unavailable and unattainable to you. And so now (laughs) you don't have to feel guilty about it until ECA emails me is like, by the way, we can get a black dial one for you. And I'm like, well, crap. (laughs) Now I have to do it. (laughs) You know what? let's do this. Hopefully they do get back in contact with me because I mean, they make great watches. Oh, I, have, I, have I, think, e- I haven't emailed them yet. This is, this is my passive, uh, my passive casting of the line out there that maybe they'll listen and, but, and, and reach out and contact me. <laughs> but what, what we'll need to do is I need to find a way for you to, to at least try this on. Yes. And, 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 and see how it feels. Um, you know, take it for a little test drive. Um, and that's another reason I know that I love this watch. I just said that, and a part of me actually hurt <laughs> from the fact that, <laughs> that I'm going to have to send this to you. Literally, a part of me just was, ugh, Ricardo. I mean, you don't, have, you don't have to send it to me tomorrow. Like, like you, can, you can honeymoon with it and do what you got to oh, okay. do. There you go. <laughs> that, 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 works. that works a little better. That works a little better. Um, but no, it, it's, it's a tough thing. I mean, I, I'm definitely going to push, like I said, I'm going to push my hashtag, you know what, F the growl. F the growl. It's, it, and, and, I, and I have to tell you, like, I'm, I'm now upset that you've created a hashtag for it. Uh, you continue to be a jerk because it's so easy. <laughs> it's so easy to, to buy into a philosophy once there's a social media campaign behind it. You, w- you, will, you will the Murph into existence. And now, and now, and now you're going to start the revolution of, of saying, screw saving for grail watches. Just buy the thing you want right now. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, don't, I have to be more specific. Don't buy the thing you want right now. Buy the thing you know you honestly can't live without. Well, it's, well it's, good, good, good news is I'm not there yet with any of these watches that I've seen so far. So. Good, good. Because <laughs> I, I think 
I think once you get that point to that point, and, and, and like I said, that's how I felt about this watch. When you get to that point, it sucks that you would, you would basically say, no, I have a grill to save up for. I'm not going to enjoy you, even though I know I'm going to keep you forever. No, no. Why? Why are you doing that to yourself? I think we all are intelligent and smart enough to differentiate between things that, okay, I'm going to stop what I just said because we're, we're really all just crazy. Um, <laughs> I, 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 was, I listened to myself for a second. I was like, no, we're all crazy when it comes to this hobby. I, it, it'll, it's really difficult for us to differentiate between something we're lusting over and something we actually it, are it very, is. very, it's, very And passionate. especially with watches, like you don't, sometimes you just don't know until it's in your hands. And that's, that's hand. also the tricky thing about, about this, uh, this hobby in particular. And I mean, and I get to go to more like watch shows and meetups and stuff like that than the average enthusiast does, I would say. But even then, like most of our shopping is being done through Instagram and on yeah. and looking at renders on websites. And sometimes you just don't know how you're going to feel about a watch until you're actually holding it and until it's actually yeah. on your wrist. On your wrist. The same thing when I had the DS30, like I loved that watch to death. And when I got one in, that was an awesome two months. And then it didn't get worn very often because I guess, I guess the honeymoon came to an end and I sold it. So, yeah. Yeah. but you know, Brad, I think this was a great first podcast for bearded turd. I think we have something good going on here. Um, it was great talking to you. I'll catch up with you again next week because um, I'm willing to bet the house that something crazy is going to happen over the next something, week. Something crazy will. Seiko will release another limited edition or at least announce another limited edition. Uh, so Mind you, we didn't even talk about that old all gold quartz that they, they that they just released the Astron. <laughs> so <laughs> whatever. We're not even, we're not even going to go there. We're not even going to go there. I, I think Scott, the guys at Scottish Watches posted about it, and I, literally I responded and says, you know what, make that sucker a bronze, a bronze watch. <laughs> I'll buy it right there. But, um, yeah, we're, uh, they're going to do something. And, and, guys, please understand, we're just saying this all in jest. I think both me and Brad have an immense amount of respect and appreciation for what Seiko does. But what, you, what I think everybody kind of realizes you could love a brand, but hate a model. Yes. Uh, I, I, think, I think just this, guys, just always remember that. Always remember, you could love a brand, but there's nothing wrong with hating a specific model. Especially and, when that brand is releasing new limited edition watches every single week. Yep. There's going to be a lot of models that you don't so, like. That you don't like? <laughs> just by... by just by the sheer amount of stuff that they're going to be releasing, it's going to happen that there's going to be something that you're just not going to gonna, gonna like. Um, but Brad, once again, it was great talking to you, man. Um, can't wait to do this again. Let, yep. Let's see what craziness happens in the world of horology over the next week. And of course, don't forget to uh, subscribe to watch with us on YouTube. If you're not subscribed already, uh, subs if you listen to this in podcast form, hit the subscribe button as well and uh you can see ricardo on the watch with us instagram feed watch with us channel instagram mm -hmm. feed rather and uh i am on instagram at budding watch enthusiast and you can check me out on youtube as well yep. and i am ready set watch on instagram though I, I i'll be completely honest with you guys most of my time i spend with the uh, watch with us channel and it just happens to work out that way but uh once again brad nice talking to you man see you next week see you